Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 side scroller video. In today's video we are going to be creating a simple door and key system whereby the player has to collect the key to open the door. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be working on maybe creating a couple more of these platforms and towards the top we're going to have a door that's going to require the player to get the key and you know use that key to open the door before they can get through. So the reason why we're doing this is so that we can actually stop the level's progression without the player collecting some items. Now you guys can put this any way you like, um, you know you can place it anywhere you like, it doesn't have to be a door, it could be a window, it could be you know an explosive wall, anything like that. But for now let's go, go ahead and show you exactly how we can set it up. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is just showing you some of the assets that we're going to be using. So we've got sm underscore underscore door frame in the starter project, uh, in the starter content. We've also got sm underscore door as well. And what we're going to be doing is pretty much just animating this door so that it opens when the player has the key. Also, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly move and create a couple of these little platforms as well. And one thing I do also want to note before I go any, go ahead any further is I also want to say you can download the latest version of the resources on my website and inside of it you'll actually have a file for key underscore diffuse and key underscore mesh. This will actually give you a key mesh and a key texture so the player can actually see the object in the file, not in the file but in the game. If you haven't got that already just go ahead and download it, download link is in the description below. So first things first, let's go ahead and create a couple more of these little platforms so that we can actually place our door somewhere. So I'm just going to move this up here and I'm going to create a couple more of these. So I'm just control, I'm just pasting these really just to, you know, give me a couple more. You guys don't actually have to make more of these if you don't want to. You guys can do anything you like. Um, but for me, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Um, so I'm going to put this here and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and put the door up here. So before we do go ahead and create the door system, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the key model and the key texture as well. So just grab key diffuse and key underscore mesh and then if we just go into our blueprints folder where we've got everything else, let's just go ahead and drag this in. Simple as that, just drag it into the content browser and that should all import. Just use the normal settings for now, import all, and then it should be good. Give that a couple of seconds to load up. And now what we need to do is we need to quickly make a material for the key so the key can actually be seen and it's not just sort of a grey look. And we're also going to be using a little bit of an emissive to give it a bit of colour and a little bit of light as well. So first things first, with key underscore diffuse, right click on it and then just go ahead and create a material and we're just going to leave the name to default for now. Go ahead and open that up, you can double click on it or you can just press enter. And once that's there, what we're going to be doing is we're pretty much just going to be hooking up texture sample into the emissive. But we're also going to put a bit of a multiply in between just so that we can make this uh, key shine a little bit, just to grab the player's attention. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use multiply and then for B I'm just going to type in constant and I'm going to set the constant to something like 15 and that will make it shine. So basically what it's doing is it's multiplying this diffuse texture and putting it into the emissive and that will just make it shine. By default your texture sample should be in the diffuse already, if it isn't just go ahead and hook it, hook it up to base colour. And you can see that's starting to shine there which is quite nice. I'm going to change this 15 value to something like um, 30 just to make it a little bit brighter. Apply that and then make sure you go ahead and save all of the changes that you've just made. So just give that a second and then we'll move on to the mesh. So there you are, save it. And now let's just go ahead and close this down. So next thing's next, key underscore mesh, double click on that, open it up and we need to apply the material to the key. So to do that, on the details panel over here, at the moment we've got key underscore B mat, ignore that, let's just go ahead and type in the new one, which is key underscore diffuse underscore mat. And now you can see it's got this sort of yellow look to it, which is quite nice. I'm going to go ahead and save that and then we are good there. So what we need to do now then 
is we actually need to go into our player character and we need to create a variable for whether or not the player actually has the key in their inventory which is quite simple and it's just going to be a little boolean so it's just going to be true or false so when the engine actually asks whether or not they've got the key it's just yes or no and then we can build our script around that so under variables in the bottom left hand corner here just go ahead and add a variable and we're just going to name this has key for now and then just set the default value to false if you haven't already. Compile it if you want to see the default value. Just make sure that is unchecked and we are good from there. So the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to create a blueprint for the key so the player can actually pick it up. So right click in your content browser, create a blueprint class, and then just go ahead and create an actor. From here, just call this key item and then just open it up. Once we open it up, add a component, and the component that we need to start off by adding is a static mesh so the player can actually see the key. And on the details panel over on the right hand side, make sure you set the static mesh to key underscore mesh, press compile, close this, and hopefully we should be able to see it in the scene. It may be a bit small to start with, but let's just have a look. That's definitely way too small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my blueprint again, Go into the viewport, click the static mesh over here, and under scale, we're just going to make this, say, five times bigger on the X, the Y, and the Z. Compile this, and then we should see our key here in our viewport nice and small. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these door frames that I've got here, and you can see we've got the key. But when we run over it, it doesn't do anything. So what we need to do is pretty much when the player actually collides with the key, get rid of it and then change the value for has key to true and then we can start working on the door. So if we go ahead and open up key inventory item and then what we're going to do is event actor begin overlap, other actor being the player, so cast to uh, side scroller character and then once they do collide with it as side scroller character we are going to set has key to true. So just make sure that's che checked and then hook it up just like that. And what we also need to do after this is we actually need to tell it to destroy this blueprint. We don't need to see it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this out and we're just gonna type in destroy actor and then make sure the target is set to self. If we compile this now and if we make sure this is actually gonna be caught by the player. So if we press play now we've moved it, go over it, it's not doing anything. So the reason why is static meshes are a little bit dodgy when it comes to begin overlap stuff. So what we need to do is instead use a trigger volume. So open up key item and then get rid of event actor begin overlap. Go to your viewport, add component, and then we are going to go ahead and add a box collision. And we're going to make sure this surrounds the key just like that. And then go back into our event graph from here get a reference to this and then on the right hand side under events it's begin overlap that we're after drag it up over here and then just replace it with the old one so other actor is going to be hooked up to object wildcard and then this is just going to be executing from there so if we compile this now and then if we go ahead and press play if we run over this it gets rid of it and that is perfect but we need to know whether or not it's actually changed the value so after this what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tell it to print a string and that string is simply gonna be it is simply gonna be you now have the key and I'm gonna compile that and we're gonna test it again so if we press play run over it you now have the key and it's disappeared and that is perfect so the next bit, the easier bit, is actually setting up the door and setting up an animation. So before I do go ahead and put my door all the way up here, um, I'm actually going to make sure the player can actually get to the top here. So I'm just going to quickly move some of these around. You guys can put this door on the floor, you can put it in the sky, you can put it literally anywhere you guys want. Um, but for now, I like to just sort of have it going up. It sort of gives it that sort of platformy sort of style that I like. So I'm going to press play and then I'm going to see if I can run all the way up here. So keep going, keep going. Oh, no, that's in the fire. No, that's no good. So I'm going to have to move this down a little bit so I can actually get to it. There you are. And this one, 
I'm going to move, I'm just going to go ahead and move it over. So just like that. And I'm going to do the same for this one. Move it over and hopefully now we can actually reach all of our stuff. And I think this is going to be where I'm going to put the door. So under starter content, go to props. And what we need to do is we need to add in two things. First thing we need to add is a door frame. And the second thing we need to add is obviously the door as well. We need to make sure we rotate this so the player can actually get through it. Just go ahead and rotate this by 90 degrees and do the same thing for the door as well. Once we've got this lined up and we've got it all positioned, we're going to be creating a matinee sequence to actually tell it to open the door. But the thing is, we're only going to play that matinee sequence if the player has the key. And that's sort of how all of the logic for this little sequence is going to work. So what I'm going to do now with this door, drag it over, make sure it's positioned properly. It's a little bit odd, so I'm just going to turn off my snapping here. There you are, and that's perfect. Cool. So I've got to create a matinee sequence now to open this door. So with the door selected, just go up to cinematics and then add a matinee. Give it a second to load up and we can do a few things. So once again, with the door selected, right click on your tracks over here and add a new empty group. And this group is just going to be called uh, door. Right click the door now and add a movement track. And with this movement track, we need to create a few uh, keyframes. First keyframe is at zero seconds, that is perfect. And then if we move our little slider at the bottom here over to one second, and then if we press enter, it'll add a second keyframe. And then with this selected, making sure it says adjust key movement, we are simply going to open this door by rotating it uh, 90 degrees, just like that. So if we press stop and then play, the door should open and that is perfect. That is everything for our animation. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. That's all done. And the next thing and the last thing we're going to do is we've got to create a few quick blueprints to check when the player gets near the door, whether or not they have the key. So what I'm going to do is volumes and then I'm going to go ahead and find that trigger volume that we talked about earlier and we're going to put it near the door. It's just placing it somewhere a little bit odd. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly restart the engine and we'll get back into this. So I'm just going to save it. You probably won't have this issue, but I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, so I'm back in the engine and I think I figured out what was going on. So once again, I'm going to drag in my trigger volume and for whatever reason, it makes it go over to some odd location. If you do get this issue, just go ahead and set the location to zero, zero, and then zero and then we'll get it here and you can see it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this up and I'm just going to bring it into my scene just like this. So I'm just going to drag it up and what I've got to do with this trigger volume is I've got to make sure this actually covers the area around the door so the player doesn't have to get right up to the door for the door to open. So with this trigger volume now we've got to do one quick thing. So go into our blueprints and open up the level blueprint. Now we're going to be doing it all inside of here because the trigger volume is in the level and so is the matinee sequence as well. So what I'm going to do is with my trigger volume uh, selected, I'm going to right click and then I'm just going to type in uh, or add an event for this and collision on actor begin overlap and then actor, the other actor is going to be the player, so cast to side scroller character. And then from here, we're just going to run a quick branch um, to check whether or not the player actually has the key. So as side scroller character, get has key and then hook it up just like that. And if it's true, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this matinee and we're going to tell it to play this little matinee. So call function and then cinematic and then play and then just hook that up to true. And then for false, it's just going to be a quick print string telling the player that they do not have the key. So in the string, and that's just going to be go collect the key. So what we've done here is when the player collides with this little trigger volume, it's going to run a check where, to see whether or not the player has the key. And if the player does have the key, it's going to open the door. And if it doesn't, it's going to tell the player to go collect it. So I'm going to compile this, press play, collect the key there. That's perfect. And now let's see if we can run up and open that door. So you can see here, we've got quite a little bit of our level here, which is quite nice. And then, okay, that's a bit too high for the player. 
It's going to move this down a little bit just so the player can actually get to it. There you are, play. Let's give it a go again. Running all the way up. Okay, you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and hopefully there should be play from here. Nope, okay, I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do then is I am going to move my player character, the default player character, all the way up here so that we can test this out. Press play and then run into the door. First time it's not going to do anything, that's not great. So if he was to fall down to the ground, get the key and then go back up. So if I just eject and then if I move him up, hold up. There you are and then possess. And now if he runs into the door, it's going to open for him and that is perfect. There is one slight little issue there guys and that is the fact that the door does not have collision on it so the player can actually just walk straight through the door. So I've got to collect, select my door here and then I've just got to go down and then collision presets make sure we set this to block all and that way the player will no longer be able to get through it. Now you guys do need to work on your little path and everything a little bit more because at the moment mine's a little bit broken it's hard to get around but I mean that's not part of this tutorial anyway just make sure you set up your game environment we'll be going over that in a little bit more detail later on in the series but hopefully now you guys know how we can set up the door and we can start creating some objectives for this player to progress through the level. Anyway guys guys this is a great place to end the video once again thanks for watching stay awesome keep creating your boy Virtus signing out